Hey, good morning, everybody. So today we're heading into the lab and we've been talking about stoichiometry for the last few days. And the two types of uh, calculations we've done are what I call regular stoichiometry, where we start with some amount of a substance and we're converting it into some new substance. And we've learned all the steps to that. Those are bracket problems, but we have to write an equation that links those two things together. And then we advanced into now that we know how much we're supposed to get from that calculation, when we go back into the lab and actually conduct the experiment, we can determine how much we really got. And that opened up the gateway to calculating what we call percent yield. Right, so this lab incorporates both. Right, so I call it the stoichiometry lab, but it's as much a percent yield lab as it is a plain stoich lab. Right, so when we go and do this experiment, there's two goals we're trying to accomplish. Right, Goal number one is we want to determine which iron ion is being used. If you look where iron lives on the periodic table, it's a transition metal. That means it could have multiple what we call oxidation states, all, uh, multiple charges. Uh, and the two most common ones are Fe plus 2 and Fe plus 3. So that's one of our goals. We want to figure out which version of the iron were we working. Uh, goal number two of the lab is to determine... the percent yield of copper. So you're going to see when we write out the equations uh, that we are generating copper as a product. That's the thing that we're going to be able to gather and isolate. Right? So that means we can calculate the percent yield. Right? So when we take you back into the lab, what you're going to do is you're going to take a sample of iron, the metal, and we're going to react it with copper to sulfate. From last chapter, you guys would see that's a single replacement reaction. The iron is going to kick out the copper. So that's going to lead us to some iron sulfate. And again, we're trying to figure out which version of the iron, the plus two or the plus three, plus the copper. All right, so the copper is what we are able to isolate and measure because it's a solid. The iron two sulfate is what we call soluble. It dissolves, so I can't measure this, but that doesn't mean I can't figure out which version of iron there is. All right, so what we really have going on here are two equations. One, where the iron is carrying a Roman numeral of two, and the other, where the iron is carrying a Roman numeral of three. All right, so I'm going to call it equation one, and that's going to be the iron with the Roman numeral of two. So we have iron, one word, not a Hoberfinkel, so it's just Fe. Copper two sulfate, Cu is a plus two charge, SO4 is a minus two, so they'll cancel. If the iron is a two, if it's iron two sulfate and the sulfate's a two, they will also cancel. And copper is not a Hoberfinkel. It would just be Cu. And this equation comes pre-balanced. So in this equation, like my Cu to Fe ratio is one to one. Right? So when I determine the moles of each of these, which I can do, because the Fe is a solid, I can measure its mass and convert it. And the Cu is a solid, I can measure its mass and convert it. If I get a one-to-one -one ratio, I know I was working with iron two salt. On the other hand, if we go to right, the other version, if I take the iron and I react it with the copper two sulfate, and this time I get iron three sulfate, that formula changes. It's Fe2 
SO43 plus the CU. This equation does not come pre-balanced. So I would have to put a three in front of the CU, SO4. That gives me three CUs, so I'd have to put a three there. And I have two FEs on the right, so I have to put a two here. So if I were to look at the CU to FE ratio here, it ends up being three to two or one and a half, all right, to one. So we can figure out whether we're working with the blue equation or whether we are working with the black equation by simply measuring the iron that is um, being measured and then gathering the CUSO, uh, CU to get the grams of that to convert them to moles. All right, so how does that end up working out? <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do is go to the back. First thing you're gonna do is get a beaker. And you're gonna put 30 milliliters of the CUSO4 in it. Right, and we're gonna heat that up. The heat of it is going to help right, to uh, make the reaction occur more quickly for us, ensure we get as much product as we can. All right, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and gather a certain amount of iron. Now, the amount of iron we get doesn't really matter, right? Because we can calculate how much we're supposed to get. Right, but if you look at your procedure, it says weigh approximately uh, one gram. All right, I would just ensure you get over one gram. And you guys will see when we do this. All right, so then we're going to go and we're going to take our weighing dish. And we're going to get over one gram. So let's say we get 1.05 and we'll see what the real number is in the back. All right, so we get that in a weighing dish. All right, and then with that in the weighing dish, we are going to transfer... By the iron into the copper sulfate solution. Like that's gonna trigger the reaction. Right? So when we dump the iron into here, right, we're gonna swirl it for five minutes and that's gonna help the reaction occur. That single replacement's happening. The irons are kicking out the coppers. The irons are kicking out the coppers. Right? And two cool things are gonna happen. One cool thing is because the copper ion is what makes this compound blue, it is going to get progressively less and less blue as we knock the copper out and turn it into copper metal because copper metal isn't blue, right? It's the color copper you associate with it. Right? And it will get more clear because the iron ion uh, doesn't have uh, a color when it's with the sulfate. All right, so what we'll end up having then is a beaker. And in that beaker, we know we're going to have copper on the bottom. But we're going to have all this leftover liquid. Now, from the 1.05, we can get right, the moles of Fe that we need. All you do is a one-step bracket problem. The 1.05 grams of Fe, just like we always do. Grams of Fe to moles of Fe. And you pull the number from the periodic table. So that's going to get you some number. So you're halfway home, right? Because to determine our equation, I need to get the Fe moles and then the Cu moles. Right? So right away, you have half of what you need. The rest of the experiment is about isolating this copper. All right? So what we're going to do all right, is pour off as much of the liquid as we can. All right? And that gets a fancy name. They call it decanting. All right? So we are going to decant as much of the liquid off as we can. So then what we're going to have is a beaker that's got copper in it, but it's still going to have a little bit of liquid on it. So then what we'll do right, is we will wash it to make sure we get everything off of the copper. Right? And there's a cycle we're going to go through. We're going to wash it with distilled water. And then we're going to wash it with acetone. All right, so when we pour the distilled water on it, all right, it's going to wash off any of the junk that's on the copper metal that we don't want. All right, and then we're going to pour that off. Then we're going to have water on the copper. 
So then we pour acetone on. And acetone right, is hydrophilic. It loves water. So what it's going to do is it's going to bind the water to it instead of the copper. So what will happen is now we just need to get rid of the acetone, which is nail polish remover. And as any of you guys that work with your nails know, like if I leave my bottle open overnight, a lot of it evaporates. So thankfully for us, if we heat this guy, we can get rid of the acetone. And now you just have a beaker with the copper in it. Right? So at the end of the day, you're going to have a beaker with just copper and we're gonna get its mass. And at the very beginning of the experiment, we get the beaker all by itself. And if we subtract those, we now know our grams of copper. And just like here, you can convert the grams that you get into moles right, by doing a one-step bracket problem. Right, now that you have these two numbers, you can see, is it a one-to-one -one ratio? <laughs> Blue equation. Or is it a three-to-two or one-and-a-half-to-one ratio, if I divide them? Then it's the black equation. All right, so let me take you to the back and show you how this is going to work. All right, so if I set up shop, At this station here, put you guys up high. All right, so you guys can see what's going on. All right, at the counter, a couple of things, right? Over here, I've got my iron. Looks like coffee grinds. There's your metallic iron. All right, I've got my balance, which I'll turn on. I've got my hot plate, which is already going. And then over here in the middle, I've got my blue copper two sulfate. And I've got my acetone for washing. All right, so if we're following the procedure, I'm going to grab that in my goggles. You guys can see what we're going to do step by step. So the first thing it says is I uh, perform the procedure on two samples simultaneously. You only have to do that if you're working with a partner. So with you guys being at home and you guys being by yourself, you just need one trial. So then it says weigh a clean, dry 100 or 250 milliliter beakers. So I'm going to go in your drawer and I'm going to get out the 100 milliliter beaker. Right? And then we need to get the mass of that guy. Turn on my balance. All right, so I put that guy on there. All right, and my empty beaker weighs 57.39 grams. All right, so in the top line of your data table, the beaker size is 100 milliliters. And then the mass of the empty beaker, all right, is 57. 0.39 for your second line. All right, then what we're supposed to do is we are supposed to add all right, approximately one gram of iron powder. So I'm going to take my beaker off the balance. I'm going to take an empty weighing dish. All right, I'm going to put the weighing dish on the balance. All right, and when I do that, all right, it's going to have a reading on it. All right, we need to get rid of that reading of the dish. So we hit the zero button. And I'm going to add this solid until it reads over one. All right, now, I overshot a bit. I said try not to exceed 1.1, but it doesn't really matter, right, because we are just going to convert it. All right, so this number says 1.37. I'm not going to write that number down, though, because just like always, i got to watch if any of it sticks to the dish. So I'm going to transfer it over to here, zero out my balance again, and then I'm going to set it up on top. And now I'm going to have the empty beaker and I'm going to have the beaker with iron. And now I know exactly how much iron made it in there. So that number says 
5874. So the mass of beaker plus iron is 5874. Right, you guys can put a star next to the mass of iron used. Right, that is going to be a calculation. Right, moles of iron used, put a star. That's a calculation. You'll do that as part of your uh, lab right now. Right, the next thing to fill in is the mass of the beaker plus copper, which means we need to do the experiment. All right, so if we go back to our procedure, right, it tells us measure out 30 milliliters of CUSO4 into our grad cylinder. So I'm going to go into my graduated cylinder, and I'm going to go get my blue liquid. All right, now I'm going to pour 30 milliliters of it in. Right, then it tells me, all right, to uh, pour it in an Erlenmeyer flask and then heat it using my Bunsen burner to where it's almost boiling. All right. And the whole goal of that is usually temperature makes reactions occur more quickly. So I'm going to get my ring stand down. And set that there so you guys can see it. I'm going to switch out my clamp for my iron ring. And then, check my gas, looks like we're doing good there. Go in my drawer, get myself my wire gauze. This will go up top. All right, then I just get my striker, turn my gas on. Give it a second, just a little bit of air in the gas line. Okay, so got that lit, heating that guy up, all right? So we're going to let that heat, and just like when you guys are boiling noodles at home, you know when something's about to boil, all right, when there's bubbles, but it's not like rolling, right? You get those little bubbles, okay? And for that reason, I have these hot hands here, because once I get this glass hot, I'm gonna have to pour it into my iron, right? and I don't wanna hold it with my hands. Okay, so, there we go. Okay, I can lower that down just a bit. All right, and I'm watching that guy go. While you're waiting for this to heat, what I would do is I would do the subtraction to get my grams of iron, and I would do my one-step bracket problem to get my moles of iron. You can start getting some of your post-lab calculations out of the way. You could also get a couple of your pre-labs out of the way, which are just some practice stoichiometry problems. All right, so this guy's taking on the heat. Take a look. Not seeing bubbles yet, so just giving it a second. All right, so I'm starting to see all right, those flickers of bubbles, which means this guy is ready. So I'm going to pick him up with my hot hands, and I'm going to transfer him into my beaker that has my iron. 
So what I did was I just initiated this reaction. All right, now I'm gonna swirl this thing for a few minutes. All right, and if I hold that up close to the camera, you can already see at the bottom right, that this is a distinctly different color than it was like, just a few moments ago because that iron is no longer iron. Right? That iron is now become copper, and the copper's got a reddish tint to it. All right, so I'm going to swirl this guy. What else you're going to see is this is not nearly as blue as it used to be because what's happening is we are taking the copper out of the liquid, which is why it's getting less and less and less blue. All right, so I'm going to keep swirling that. The whole goal is to not let any of the solid be stuck to the glass and make sure the liquid has the ability to get to all. Oh. Right, if I tip this up and let you guys see it from the bottom, right, you can see that reddish colored cup. Oh, so I've created my copper now. Now I just need to isolate it. All right, so what I'm going to do, like it said, is I'm going to decant. I'm going to pour off as much of this liquid as I can. I'm going to put some water with it. But I don't want to put, I don't want to dump any of my copper down the drain because that's the good stuff. That's what we need. That's what we want to gather. So you see, I have some blue liquid in there still. Right, this is why we're going to go through this washing process. All right, so I'm going to wash it with some water. I'm going to take 10 milliliters of water. And I'm going to dump that on there. And I'm going to swirl it. All right, and I'm going to decant. And what I'm doing is pouring off any of the junk ions and some of that copper that's still left on it. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to wash it twice with water. Okay. All right. Now, no more blue stuff in there. All right. But what I need to do now is I got to get rid of the water. So to do that, like I said earlier, I'm going to put some acetone on it. And then with the acetone, acetone likes the water. Okay? You always want to keep your acetone cap so it doesn't evaporate away. All right, so I'm going to swirl it. Right? And you would want to always make sure that you aren't working with the acetone while a group across from you had their burner open because acetone is very flammable. Right? It turns into a gas because it's volatile. It actually might jump over right, to your partner's Bunsen burner. Right? So in class, I have a station in the middle away from all our burners just in case somebody broke a piece of glass and had to start over all right, to get rid of the acetone. Right, now, the acetone's got a... Disposal in the center with the heavy waste. So we'll dump that there. All right, and if there's a little tiny bit left, it can go. All right, so we do that twice, and now I need to get rid of the acetone. All right, so to do that, I'm going to put it on low heat. I take it over here, and I put it on my hot. Right, and it's going to sit on there until uh, it is dry, right? And a lot of times what you want to do is poke at it with your stir rod because if there is acetone that's turning into a gas underneath like a clump, what happens is uh, it like pops, right? And we don't want that to happen. So you're just going to make sure... That's not happening. 
And then we're going to heat this guy. Right, until it's dry. All right, and you want to try to make sure you get all that copper off of your rod. And you're starting to see why do I not get 100% yield? Because inevitably, yeah, I might have a speck or two of copper on my glass stir rod, right? And that's going to decrease my percent yield. All right, so that guy's gonna heat, all right? And while he's heating, what we could be doing is tearing down our Bunsen burner, putting our wire gauze and our ring stands back to rinsing out our grad cylinder, putting some things back, rinsing out our Erlenmeyer flask because all of these things are cool enough now to clean them. Okay, we'll put our stir rod back. All right, take this back to the center counter. All right, and then this guy's still heating. Now we gotta leave our hot hands out because that is still going to be a little bit warm. All right, but we would heat this guy, and you can see. Right, that it is a solid here on the bottom, and we've gotten it to be dry. Right, we'd let that cool a bit because right, we don't want any hot air to be coming under our balance and lifting it because hot air rises, makes it artificially light. Right, and once we get that thing to be cool, I move it up onto the balance to get our final mix. Right, and that final number that you guys want to record for your beaker plus copper is 58.8. Five. So right here, you're doing the 58.85. Now you can get your grams of copper, your moles, which should both have stars, and your moles of copper. You now have all the pieces you need to determine which equation you use. And now that you know how much copper you got at the end, and you can calculate how much you were supposed to get using the iron, uh, you now can calculate your percent yield. All right, so obviously I'll be around for any questions that you guys have. Look forward to seeing you guys back very soon.